I've noticed a lot of my friends are going through some, uh, I guess, uh, mental illnesses, a mm. lot of trouble. It's been a tough few years for everyone. Yeah. Can you give any suggestions for us to cope with that? Anything that might help cope with negative thoughts? So, um, I mean, the first thing is, is, is meditate. Like, there's so many apps out there now. There's all this. Meditation, Dr. Herbert Benson, he studied uh, meditation for 40 years. Like, this is what he did at Harvard University. Uh, then he was running the Mon Body Institute at, at, at the Boston Hospital, uh, at a hospital in Boston, and the Mind and Body Institute at Harvard University. And, and what he discovered was, right, in his books uh, that... He, which he's written about in his books is 95 percent right and then he says in brackets it could be even a hundred of all illness is stress related right it's becoming from stress because stress tightens everything up and keeps it in that state of tightness when that happens the rest of the body's mechanisms the immune system the blood pressure the the, the blood flow the energy the you know the you know the the urinary tract, the bladder, everything. Everything is is this heightened tenseness of, like you're holding this barbell with 300 pounds yes. all the time. Sooner or later, it's gonna collapse. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're gonna let go and it's gonna go, <laughs> you know. So you gotta relax, you know. And Netflix is not relaxing, yes. right? Watching, you know, reading books is not relaxing. You gotta relax, you need to meditate, or some form of real relaxation. Because even doing exercise, especially the way many of us do exercise, it becomes, a, it becomes competitive, right? Yeah. It's pushing too far. There's, a, there's that space between. You gotta go into that space of, of play, of, of, of relaxation, so meditate. Um, you're really against, you don't wanna meditate, then you gotta get the next thing closest to it. Like do some art or paint or something which focuses you in something very different than what you're usually doing. So that's the first thing to do is find something that you're gonna do regularly. And if it, and if, you know, walking, but don't walk with your headphones on and listening to music. Walk without your phone, you know, walk out, go and just look, right? Yeah. The second thing is, is, uh, is appreciate, is get a notebook, get a journal, and just write down things that you appreciate, right? Like. Oh, I appreciate Ralph came by today. That's kind of cool. Or I appreciate the people, you know, in the audience, they were clapping yes. when I asked them to or, you know, so on. So I appreciate, you know, that Raymond's always so patient even when I uh, yell, right? Get frustrated with them, <laughs> right? Or uh, I appreciate that it's sunny outside or I appreciate that, oh, actually, there's, a, there's something here. Maybe I'm going to get something to eat at this place or I appreciate that. Domino's had a 50% off discount this week on pizza or whatever. So there are all these options, right, that I can focus on to look at in my day, which I can benefit from. And what ends up happening is when I start to appreciate that I'm getting out of that mental stress and strain, and I start to look at the better things. And as I talked about earlier, is the reticular activating system, right? Whatever I'm focusing on is what my mind goes to, right? So whatever I'm thinking is where my mind goes to now if I focus on feeling bad, feeling depressed, what happens? I go to the bad, I go to the depressed, I go to the bad feelings and bad thoughts. If I say I'm looking at appreciation, where does it go to? Ah, oh, well, this is actually kind of nice. Oh, I like this too, or I like this, or I like my, oh, that's a really nice sofa I bought. Or I remember that day with my dad or my, you know, oh, the girl, you know, my, me and my girlfriend had a great time last week or whatever it was. And it starts to bring up that energy. And, and, that, and that makes all the difference. So. Um, so finding those things that keep making you feel better, right? And not, and this is not, uh, you know what they say, it's not lipstick on a pig. It's a, it's neuroscience. It's, there's a chemical reaction in your body, right? That takes place because you're sending in positive messages. The brain starts to emit those electrical signals, whether it's chemical signals or electrical signals through the nervous system. And it starts to produce, right, the different drugs. Our brain, is producing drugs all the time, right? Through the body's mechanism. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a normal thing. So instead of smoking the joint, you know, do something more fun, yes. meditate, yeah. because you're gonna get the same benefit, right? Because, yeah, it's nice to smoke a joint once in a while, but if that becomes the habit, 
then you're, it's, you're not able to create that on your own. And that's the key, is you want to be able to create those experiences on your own whenever you want. Because that's your power, yes. right? Because what happens if you're traveling and all of a sudden you ran out of doobies and now it's, where do I get one, right? Then you're stuck. Then you go back to that state of stress. Whether or I need a drink, right? Okay, but then I go back to that state of stress again because I'm missing something that I'm waiting from the outside. But if I focus on doing it internally, I focus on doing it for myself at any time, then I've got all the power right here. And, and that brings me and reminds me of something that, you know, I, was, I started writing a journal when I was about 12 years old. Inaccurate, in grade two, so whatever you are in grade two, grade nine. And I found it actually in my, in my, my, my mom had put my stuff away. And I found the little notebook that I was writing in. I was saying, okay, so how, what do I need to improve about myself and all these different things, right? And I had like 56 things in grade two. I was like, and then I look back at it, and you know what? Like 45 of them were still the same. Ah! So, okay. Because if we don't do it consistently, right? If it's up and down, if, it's, if we don't do it consistently, we don't look after it consistently, right? Then, then it just, it'll be, it's, it's hard to come out. So we gotta keep building it, right? You gotta keep, you know, you wanna keep building on that uh, regularly. So, you know, coming back to that state is, is when I discovered, you know, uh, early in my life, I said, you know, I wanna be able to have all the power that I need right here. I don't need, I don't wanna have to need you know, a drill in order to do my job. Yes. I don't want to have to need a camera in order to do my job. I want to be able to be able to do everything that I need to do, right, right here. Because then I'm free. And that was my, uh, that was my thing, or one of the things that really drove me to do more of the self-development and I did NLP and, you know, and so on and so on and so on. It's, it's if we have access to it right here, right, all the other stuff, Everything else outside becomes a process of, um, of acting, of fulfilling on, on what, I, what I need, right? Or what I already have. I don't, I don't need it to come from the outside because it's coming from the inside and it's going out. And then I just need tools. I just need those tools or with tools, I can fulfill on those goals. Or I can fulfill on those goals with other people because they have the tools, right? And that's one of the things about, you know, in this process of, you know, learning leadership, et cetera, is, oh yeah, really, you don't need to learn, you don't need to know how to do everything. You need to know to create your vision, your thoughts, be in control of what it is, what you want, and share your vision with other people. And when you share your vision with other people, other people start to join in and they want to support that because they have their own vision. And inside their vision and your vision connect, then you're working together and you've got value for each other. So that is um, a bit of a, uh, a digression there of what you asked, but that that is the process is relax, find a place to relax, find a way to relax for yourself regularly, consistently, every single day. And whether it's five minutes every morning or 10 minutes every morning or 15 minutes every morning, it doesn't matter. It's more important to do it consistently. If you're gonna do a hobby, if you're gonna do painting or color, you know, color by numbers, I got a, color, uh, what is it? Yeah, coloring book, right? <laughs> do a coloring book for five minutes a day. Yeah. Like, That'll, oh, and then you can look at it and say, oh, that's kind of nice, I did a nice job. And then you start to appreciate. So all these things are, you know, interrelated. Hang out with nice people. Hang out with people who are positive, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, these are other things you could do. But first, you got to get out of the hole, right? You yes. got to get out of the hole and you got to, and keep, keep building on it every single day. If you would like to watch more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel below. Once again, my name is Steven Dobos. And you can download a free centering exercise. The information is in the description box below.